at Baha Khachadurian's uh, Haute Couture Atelier. I guess is that, is that how I should? I mean, we're in this fantastic um, design studio, Van, where we were here about a year ago interviewing another person for Hidden People, and it was a completely different place. So when we walked in today, I think all of the crew was awestruck for a couple of seconds. Um, you are a fashion designer. Uh, it's the first time uh, on Hidden People that we're interviewing somebody who's a fashion designer, so I'm very excited. And uh, very rarely do we hear about Armenian fashion designers. Um, on a global scale, certainly, I don't, perhaps there are, you could enlighten me. Uh, but even in Armenia, uh, especially for someone like me. But um, I, it's really interesting to me. Did you always know that you wanted to to be a designer? Mm, you know, I've always liked working with clothes. Mm -hmm. Even as a kid, I mean, it's not even work, it's just, but you like clothes, you know. Sure. And I also like designing a lot, but to understand that I wanted to do it as a job, uh, probably I was in high school. And back then, it was the 90s, and Armenia wasn't in the best yeah. uh, state, you know, so going into an art school seemed like very unreasonable at the moment. Unrealistic, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my parents didn't really encourage me, so I thought I'll do something which could probably feed me <laughs> after I graduated, so I chose languages. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, it, but somehow, I even without studying, I I appeared in the right place in the, at the right time, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I met people in the showbiz, which was, it's as itself, show business didn't really exist back then in Armenia. But obviously, there were artists, there were people who were singing and trying to do something. So we c somehow started doing things together. Mm -hmm. So they were singing, I was designing for them, you know. So you've had no professional training as a designer or? Talking about uh, when I started, when 18, I, I was 19. 15. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was even too early to yeah. have any kind of education, right. you know. But when I was 15 and my friends were, they were teenagers as well. So yeah. we kind of started doing together while they were singing. I was trying to dress them. And mm -hmm. So it started back then and uh, I, I finished school. I went to the university, but all that time I was still continuing to grow together with them. You know, so at some point I realized that other people wanted me to work with them as well in uh, um, in the same circle, you know, mm -hmm. always singers and everything. So that's how it started. Basically, it was more in a very small group of people. Right. It's funny, you know, in Armenia, we often this is always something that we talk about that, you know, we always perceive Armenia to be a country where there's very limited possibilities and opportunities. Yet, because it's small, it is possible to make the right connections within Armenia's reality and then grow. And then from there, use that as a platform to go elsewhere. So it's, it's interesting that you said that, how, you know, with a group of friends, um, and then all of a sudden there's a demand for your services. You know, it, the same thing just repeats after 15 years. Back then I was 15, now I'm 30, and now I'm back to Armenia, uh, specifically for that reason, mm -hmm. because I wanted to start on an on my own ground, you know, here. And I knew I couldn't do it better anywhere else than Armenia because I know people here. Yeah. This is my country and I, it's much easier to start something that will hopefully grow bigger and then take it out mm -hmm. to everywhere else. Because living in Italy for three years, I, I worked for other people and I really wanted to do something of my own, you know. So how did you end up in Italy? Let's, let, let's retrace our steps a little bit. Well, it was 2008, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I was working here for, uh, for different fashion magazines as an art director. I was working as a designer. I didn't have my own studio. Mm -hmm. I was collaborating with a few uh, sartorial ateliers, you know. So I was designing, basically taking my clients there. We were making the clothes, but I never owned my own place. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't have the time probably to just concentrate on the designing because f the magazine, the clothes, and then I was working as a um, stylist for different celebrities. I was doing some music videos as a director. So my, my time was 
divided into different things, all connected probably, but mm. just not specifically. Yeah, uh, you're in the milieu, yeah. and yet there's a million things you're doing. And then at some point, uh, I just d decided to concentrate on one thing, one thing I liked most of all, you know, so I knew that I wanted to grow, but in Armenia, you don't have the possibility to grow professionally. And at that point, I had been already working in fashion for many years, so I felt somehow that I'm in front of a wall, so I needed a change. So I basically left everything and I decided to go to study, something that I had never done mm -hmm. in fashion, you know. So I went, I chose this school in Italy, in Florence, and I really loved Italy, I had been there before and I knew if there is one place I want to study, it would be there. Mm -hmm. I spoke the language, so it made me much easier. Oh, because you studied languages in university? Well, I, studied, I studied different languages, but Italian I learned myself because I really liked it as a <laughs> language, yeah. So basically that's how I ended up being in Italy. I went to study, I finished the academy, and then I got a job offer, mm -hmm. a very tempting one, so I... Which was with... with it was it was with Dolce and Gabbana. Okay. So that's pretty impressive. No. That was very a very good experience. Mm -hmm. Very very new. Mm -hmm. Unlike anything I had done before, you know, the work here and then the studies. You learn in a company more than you could even imagine. Even it was only one year, because then I actually left and decided to come back to Armenia, which was a very strange probably decision to uh, to the others to sure. leave a job in a company like that but i had my own reasons as i told you i wanted to start something of my own and mm -hmm. that's the reason so now you've been back in armenia how long then i came back in march mm -hmm. of this year yes and then in may i had my first fashion show and i opened the atelier right after the fashion show the next day i had the opening here so it was the first of june so okay so just brand new brand new everything so after three four years in italy uh, that amazing experience i imagine because italy you know the heart of fashion and the center of fashion uh, world fashion probably and then coming back to armenia and trying to start something new how was it received but for me it's really interesting to know who who's your clientele in armenia uh, well, I don't need names. I just yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, if it's about dropping names before going away from Armenia, that's when I actually worked with probably all the celebrities, right. and that was something that people couldn't really understand. If you're in fashion and if you're working with all these people, how can you just leave? Right. You know, right. but then names don't really change anything, names are names. I, I respect those people, you know, but there are people who just... Sure, like, oh, like me. <laughs> so it's not about names, right. believe me. And now I'm working with uh, ordinary people. I guess when I'm saying ordinary, of course it's people who can, who afford what I do, you know, mm -hmm. you know who can pay for the product, because it's not, uh, it's not very economical. I no, I would imagine, because from what I understand, my limited knowledge of fashion is that when you say haute couture, that it's all handmade. It's a lot of handwork, yeah. a lot. Uh, so, I mean, uh, for an average garment, I mean, let's say an evening dress, um, you know, a factory produced one you can do, I don't know, very quickly, but your, your garment... Well, I have to tell you that I have a separate group of girls, okay. all girls, who do the handwork and on one single gown, there can be five or six people working simultaneously for a week. So it's a lot of work. We try to do it fast because in Armenia, you know, people don't really consider the yeah. time before making an order so they can come and say, I want this dress in a week because I have a wedding to attend. Yeah. <laughs> and it's impossible to just to every single client, you know, yeah. tell the whole story how the garment takes such a long time yeah. to make. So we just try to compensate it with a quantity of people, you know, not to, not, not to risk the quality. So now your label is Vahan Khachadurian. And we had a, a brief discussion about keeping the name, because it's a difficult name to pronounce for, for the rest of the world, I suspect. Um, and you chose to keep your name as your label. Maybe it's still too early. I mean, you're still young. Uh, for the fashion world, you still have many, many years ahead of you of creating and designing uh, and bringing your style and your essence. What would be the ultimate 
the ultimate thing for you, the ultimate sort of criteria of success, or, or, or are you already successful? You know, uh, you, you should never stop. I mean, of course, it's just a very new brand, very young brand, and it's too early to talk about where I could get, but where I would like to get is to, to the Fashion Week, most probably the Paris Fashion Week, which is a very, very long way away <laughs> from where I am now. I completely realize that, but that's... But I, sure, I don't want I mean, to yeah. call it a dream because it's not really a dream, it's something I'm working toward. Towards. And it may take time, but I'm ready to invest my time and my work, you know, and meanwhile, I do work meanwhile, so, you know, pr it has to come naturally. I have to grow mm -hmm. and, be, you know, become better. Mm -hmm. And if that day comes, then I'll probably... A question uh, for, for the world that you exist in. There's talent, there's hard work, and then there's luck. Is that a, being at the right place, the right time, meeting the right people to give you that foothold, does that exist? Uh, it definitely does, but I think that it's also about a little bit of ambition. You know? I'm not talking about being ambitious in a bad way, but being Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and luck, of course, it helps in any situation, but hard work and trying, not giving up, you know, it's very important because this is a really tough, tough business. I guess every business is tough in its own way, sure. but this is, uh, I've been in it, I've seen it from every angle, you know, so it's a really, and especially for young people who just start, most of them probably cannot stand the pressure and uh, mm, the disappointment, the many times of being disappointed, you know, in this kind of... How many times you have to fail before... So yeah. if you don't give up and you keep on trying, and of course if you're talented, because you have to be good. There is such a big competition in this field, you know, there's plenty of talented people. Mm -hmm. So if you're not talented, there's no... no luck way. wouldn't help <laughs> Well, because at the end of the day, the product is right there. You can't pretend, you can't falsify it, you can't... Well, unless you're very, 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 very rich. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in that <laughs> case, you know, you can buy everything, so you can buy probably else. Well, we don't need that, no, no. <laughs> I mean, then it becomes, then it's no longer a challenge, yeah. you know. Well, that, that's something that you can probably obtain for a very short Period time, of time, but then yeah. you can't Even that won't become give you full the people for too long. Yeah, that's, so. the, that's the word I was looking for. Um, I noticed that in your studio, and I hope later we can take a look at some of, uh, the, some of the things that you make. You also have purses, so you're expanding beyond actual clothing, and now are you getting into the accessories? Um, you know, we have the problem, being in Armenia, that most of the production group, uh, well, companies or whatever, mm -hmm. they are not really adapted to making products which are of high quality of, high quality of a cer certain standard mm -hmm. you know it can be the lack of professionals or it can be the lack of um, clientele who understands mm -hmm. really the difference you know right. so if you don't have someone who you know, who wants something of a better quality and they're ready to pay for this then you won't even bother to make your product better mm -hmm. i guess so so it's really difficult. We tried also with shoes, but we were very, very, very disappointed, although it, it was a big investment, but it failed. So we're trying to do that, but most probably I'll really prefer to do it outside of Armenia, as bad as it sounds, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, to, to, to make the actual, right, to actually make them, like yes. design them here and have them made yeah. somewhere else. I would probably prefer to stop it for a while right now and then, because this was the first attempt. Okay. And probably I will just give it a time and then when I restart it, it would be, mm -hmm. my guess is it would be in Italy because I know the market a little bit here. Sure. So how many people do you have working for you? Uh, I noticed that when we walked in, you had a whole sort of, the atelier <laughs> section. Yeah. Well, I have my tailors, right. and then the part where I told, as I told you, the handwork mm -hmm. and the administrative part, it changes a lot because it depends on the time. When I just started working, because we were preparing for the fashion show, I needed more people. So I had also people coming to do internship, young girls from the Fine Arts Academy, some of whom I actually 
than hired. Just, yeah. hired, yeah. But at the moment, I guess the team is about 12 people. So it's not very big. It's uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if it's big or not, but yeah, it's, it seems it's like not, it's little. not very big uh, for the because you know we're not working on quantity right. at the moment because there are plans to probably expand a little bit and other than the couture line have something more closer to ready to wear. You sure, know? sure. And then I'll need a bigger team yeah. because then I'll have also sale. I don't know if it would be a, my own shop or if it would be in multi-brand mm -hmm. shops in the city. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're thinking about... That would be great because I think there's a lot of people uh, who would really love to support local designers. Um, people who uh, some obviously couldn't afford the, the higher priced items, but to have something that's affordable, accessible to, you know, to a much wider uh, group of people. I'm, I'm glad that the times changed because a few years ago, people would prefer to pay money for a brand name, which was coming from Europe, and even buying clothes where you could actually see the name, so it would be plastered all over, you know. Sorry. <laughs> but the time is changing, and I guess there's this yeah. not a big uh, percentage of the those who understand and can afford it, you know, mm -hmm. but some of these people really to get it, yeah. and it's not just about the label; it's about the quality and how it looks it's on you. It's a really good thing, you know. We're we're, yeah. we're going forward. forward because, as just as a, I don't know if this should be a last question, but it's very interesting for me. Um, when you walk on the streets of Yerevan, I'm not talking about the village. I'm talking about downtown Yerevan, which is you know always sort of the hippest, technically, section of the city, and you see the way girls and and, and young men dress. What do you think? You know, I spent most of my day in the atelier. You're trying not to answer the question. <laughs> I'm coming here early in the morning. Right. Well, early for me, you know. <laughs> Which is what? Uh, yeah, I know. But then really I go out very late at the time when everyone is outside. Right. Okay? So I guess I see the part of the day where everyone, when everyone is dressed up to impress, I guess, you know. Because during the day, how people dress to go to work, and I don't really see that. I see the part where they actually dress and come to the very center, to downtown, to walk around. Yeah, and, and to be seen. Um, well, I don't want to give a... No, well, my opinion is it could be better, obviously, but... Uh, if you have to compare with what we have now and what we had, say, 10 years Absolutely. ago, there is a very, very big step forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's improving, you know. We're still not there and probably it'll take another 10 years to... But I'm, I'm happy... To see the progress, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, progress. absolutely. Yeah, there's a... The you can't change in one day, it's impossible, you know. Absolutely. So it, it takes time and you have to be patient and... But well, Vanjan, it was a real pleasure, a real treat for me to, to, to meet you and to be in, 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 your, in your atelier. Um, you know, I say it all the time, I wish you success. You know, Absolutely, I wish you success, but I, I also wish that you do reach greater heights and um, because I sense that there's so much passion for this industry, uh, you, you know, you can tell even though you just woke up and got here this morning, but, um, I really do wish that um, we'll be hearing a lot more of you. Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, who knows? I hope so, I hope so. I'm not doing it just for myself, I hope to bring something Armenian to sure. the European scene. Sure, absolutely. Well, the best of luck to you. And I hope now you get to, I get to see some of your fashion designs and your shop where your girls are working. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you.